antediluvians. Are they the destroyers of worlds, as the stories say, or are they the saviors of vampire kind? The answer is, it depends on who you ask. Most believe these godlike OG vampires to be in a state of torpor, or they're manipulating the Jihad from behind the scenes. And in some cases, they're just dead. The problem with this is that many of the myths and the prophecies around the antediluvians and the clan founders, they are either suspicious or contradictory. And while opinions of them have changed throughout history, some stories or some common thoughts have just persisted through time. Some clans like their founders, some clans are very, very afraid of their founders. And in almost every case, whether the clan likes their founder or not, they are almost always portrayed as boogeymen that will come out of the dark and devour you. This is likely because in history, when an antediluvian has woken up, they have destroyed entire clans, and this has happened more than once. So if the clan founders actually do care, they have a very strange way of showing it. In the modern setting, if the antediluvians actually are around, they would be beings of absolute incredible power. Not only would they be masters of their disciplines, they would have the ability to hide their existence from other vampires and the clans, despite some of their best efforts to find them. So what is an antediluvian? We've already covered that they are incredibly powerful, but the name itself has a specific meaning. There were 13 antediluvians and they survived what is called the Great Deluge. This would be the Biblical Flood. It is the flood that destroyed the first city of Enoch. The name itself, Antediluvian, means before the flood, so it's really attached to a time period. You could also apply this term to Cain or any of the second generation vampires because they would also be before the flood. But it is commonly used to refer to the third generation vampires, the founders of the clans. When you start looking into this time period, you may also hear the name Children of Seth. This is a very old term used to describe humanity, but it is still commonly used by Nautists. Now, according to Nautist lore, the third generation vampires were actually all embraced in the first city of Enoch. Their sires were the second generation vampires, who were sired by Cain. Now, the second generation only had three members, and I'm probably going to kill the pronunciation of all of these. So there's your warning. Cain sired Enoch, Irad, and Zillah. After the first city was destroyed, this is when they all got the name Antediluvians. Now, Cain had actually taken a bit of a back seat when it came to managing or running the lives of his childer his first three vampires that he sired. After the flood, they had come seeking him out looking for guidance, the second generation and the third generation. Through some events that happened in Cain's life earlier, he was not willing to help them, and he told them to go away. His childer really did not like that answer. Being very angry that they were left to fend for themselves, they rose up and destroyed the second generation and went off to build their own city with blackjack and hookers. When Cain found this out, he was very upset. He was very angry at what had happened, and he cursed the third generation vampires with weaknesses, and this is how we get the clan weaknesses that we know of today. This city that was founded was known as the Second City, and for a while it prospered, until it fell to vampire infighting. There was a revolt that happened in the second city, and there was a very major casualty in this rebellion. This was the death of the Clan Brugia founder. He was actually killed by one of his own childer, Troil. I'm probably again pronouncing that one wrong. From this point, the clan split into two. The Brugia that were already embraced by this point, including the ones that Troil had embraced, they called themselves the True Brugia, and anyone who was the descendant of Troil became known as the Brugia clan, more so the one that we know today. Before we move on, if you are enjoying the video today, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification.
As we do move into the holidays, if you are looking to get a gift for someone, I do have the gift of books or literature. In the description below, there is a link for a 30 day free trial of Audible Plus. If you use my link and sign up, there is a little bit of an affiliate commission that comes back to myself. So if you were considering Audible for yourself or somebody else, please consider using my link. Now, individual opinions on the antediluvians, they vary wildly. But as a collective, they are typically drawn between two lines. You have the Camarilla and the Sabbat. The Camarilla believes that the antediluvians, they never existed, they never were, and if you say otherwise, you're going to have an unfortunate accident. This happens for a couple of reasons. The Camarilla doesn't want to lose power, so they have to control the narrative. And some of them legitimately believe this. Information on the antediluvians is very hard to come by in the best of circumstances. And those that have any information or even a belief that the antediluvians existed tend to have a little bit of issues with paranoia. And if left in this paranoia for long enough, it can affect their judgment and they do silly things like joining the Sabbat or joining a cult. And since some of the oldest members of the Camarilla are only five centuries old, they don't remember a time when the antediluvians were actually alive or present. The Sabbat has a creed that is pseudo-religious. They view it as their duty to destroy the antediluvians. Many of the Sabbat members believe that they are in a war for their very survival, their very existence. And if they don't win, then the antediluvians, when they wake up, will enslave or destroy all of kindred society. So the stakes are very high to them. Now, while they do actively pursue the antediluvians, it's not that they're any better at it or have any more information than their Camarilla counterparts. Very little is known about the antediluvians, including even their names. Mostly what happens there is you get clan name antediluvian. Some of what the vampires know or perceive to know has been influenced by Nautist scholars. For example, the Malkavian antediluvian Malkav. It's just a change of the clan name. It's probably not his real name, but that's what everyone calls him or collectively agrees to call him. That said, there are a few names that are collectively agreed upon when it comes to kindred society. The Asamite clan antediluvian is perceived to be Hakim, and this is probably where the new clan name Banu Hakim forms. The Bruja have Troil, as we've discussed, followers of Set, Set, sometimes he's referred to as Sutek or Typhon, the Gangrel have Enoya, the Giovanni have Augustus Giovanni, or they had Augustus Giovanni, Clan La Sombra have La Sombra as their antediluvian, Malkavians call theirs Malkav, Nosferatu call theirs Absimiliard. I'm butchering the pronunciations of all of these and you can tell me about it in the comments below. The Ravnos have Big Daddy Z, the original name is Ravana, and they call them Zapathasura. And the name Zapathasura, that's more of a title, and it just means a cursed monster. Clan Toreador call their antediluvian Erekel, or Ishtar. Clan Tremier call theirs Tremier. Clan Zemisi call theirs Zemisi. And the Ventru clan call theirs Ventru. In the more modern version of Vampire, there are several clans that are no longer clans anymore. They are bloodlines, but they still had a formation in the beginning. Cappadocians, who are no longer around, they called their clan founder Cappadocius. The Salubri called theirs Zaulot, and the true Bruja clan that we discussed earlier in the video, their founder was Bruja, also known as Ilias or Troil the Elder. Now, speaking of antediluvians that have died or passed, there are several that are believed to have been destroyed. The Ventru claim that their founder was destroyed or killed in the second city or the outskirts of the second city. And they believe that it was done by the Bruja clan or Set. Bruja himself was diablerized by Troil in the second city. Zalot was diablerized by Tremier in 1133. La Sombra was believed to have been destroyed and diablerized at the start of the first Anarch Revolt. The Zemisi clan antediluvian, Zemisi, was also believed to have been diablerized at the start of the first Anarch Revolt. 
and Cappadocius, who we've discussed already as being dead, was diablerized by Augustus Giovanni. This happened in 1444. If you would like to get an overview of the vampire clans, then please check the video out on your screen now. Thank you every single one of my patrons for supporting me and continuing to support me. It has meant the absolute world to me while I prepare to move to the UK with my family. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.